So when they're walking on the road to Emmaus, and they're discussing it, and they can't figure out what, Jesus takes them through the Word of God and shows them why everything has to happen. And all of a sudden, they have an encounter, and when they had that encounter, they knew who he was. You can pray till you're blue in the face, you can quote scriptures all you want, but it's the encounters that will change you. And they had many encounters, and it did. I mean, they, they, they were walking on a journey, and, and it was late, and then all of a sudden they hightailed it back to Jerusalem and got there quick after an encounter. And you have to understand, it is not wrong to be challenged but it is unscriptural to be defeated. And so I'm going to go through quite a few scriptures here. We're going to start in Matthew 5, verse 17. Jesus is talking in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets, for I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. The word abolish there is the same word used when it's talking about a vow made from a wife or a daughter, and the father or the husband hears it, and he says no or yes, contradicting what she said. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't think I came to say that what my father said yes to, I'm now saying no to, and what my father said no to, I'm now saying yes to. He didn't do that. He said I came to fulfill it. In other words, he's standing there and he's saying, this is what it looks like to live according to the word of God. He is perfect theology. So we have to stop talking the Old Testament this, the New Testament that, the Bible is the Bible, take the whole thing and work the instructions. So when challenges come, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5. If you ever want to know what the will of God is for your life, it's right here. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, number one, rejoice always. When you rejoice, rejoicing has nothing to do with what happened in your life. It is a celebration of what is written. You have to rejoice in everything. You have to have joy. Joy is your strength. Though sorrow may last for a night, joy comes in the morning. Wake up! Number two, pray without ceasing. Three, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Anytime you have a challenge, go to the word of God. Sit there till you find peace. And then third, after you find peace, keep going until you find your solution to your problem. In Galatians 3, Paul says this. He says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. So that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we can receive the promised scripture through faith. How many of you have gotten prayed for nothing? Well, I'm believing, brother. I'm believing. You know, sometimes you need to go beyond believing and start receiving. You have to get the word of God into you, make it become a part of you that you can move beyond re believing to receiving. I believe that God rose Jesus from the dead, but I have to receive him into my heart for it to change me. I'm going to take three stories out of the Old Testament and how we need to apply this to our lives and what we do. The first one is in Genesis Genesis 18, and here is the story where Abraham is, is, is sitting out by the tree, and these three angels show up, and they're planning on going by, and Abraham gets them to stop and, and, and feeds them, and while they're talking, they say to them, where is Sarah, and they promise that she will have a child in a year from now, and she laughs. And she, you know, sometimes before your miracle will happen, you need to find joy. Hannah, 
crying out to God. Eli says, woman, you're drunk. No, I'm not drunk. I'm crying out to God. We'll receive what you have. And she immediately, hadn't had the miracle yet, got up and was joyful. Joy is the breeding ground for miracles. And as they're sitting there talking, God the Father says through these angels, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. That's what we just read what Paul said in Galatians. For I have chosen him that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord and to do righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, because of the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if it not, I will know. Does anybody see a problem with that verse? Yes? No? I'll read it again. I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. Nobody has a problem with that verse? We're talking about the God of all creation, the one who knew the end from the beginning, the one who knew he was going to send his son for the salvation of all mankind. He doesn't know? No, what God is doing is he's setting an example here that you have to investigate. You can't just take a cry, a word you hear, and think, oh, that's it. No, you have to go about doing investigation. And God goes down, and he begins to investigate. And of course he found out to be true. Let me show you one where there's no investigation done. It's over in the book of Judges. You have the story of a Levite and his concubine. And she had ran away and gone back to her father's house, and, and he goes and gets her. And the father keeps delaying them from leaving. And finally, the, the, the man goes, I'm, I'm leaving, but he left so late in the day, he can't get home in time before dark. And so he's got a servant with him. They've got multiple donkeys, and they stop off in Gibeah, which is Benjam uh, Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin. And while they were there, something goes terribly wrong. Not that this guy was overly a great man or anything. But to just make the story short, his concubine is killed. And so instead of taking a donkey and sending it out and telling what happened, he decided to go to the Facebook of that day. He decided to go on Twitter. He decided to go on Instagram, and he began to share. And people began to see it, and they shared it, and they shared it, and they shared it, and there was no investigation. He actually cut up his concubine and sent it to the 12 tribes. Absolutely no investigation. They hear the word. They gather together. They begin to do things. And war breaks out. You have to understand when you don't begin to investigate, when you don't begin to search the word of God, you are going to bring devastation upon yourself. They brought devastation upon themselves. They end up killing all the women and the children in the town. Uh, this is great. Glad you brought this story up. Wonderful. This is what a lack of investigation does. When you see things in the media today, online, we just take it. We don't even... I'm telling you, most of the things I see on there, I can tell you within one minute if it's true or not. You have no excuse in the day and age of information in which we live to not know if it's true or not. If you don't take the time to investigate, what it is is laziness on your part. And so they don't investigate. They gather together. They do that. They kill them all. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh dear, the tribe of Benjamin is going to be gone. We've taken all their wives. And we've made a vow that we won't give them any of ours. And so instead of making things right, they decide, I'm going to make another bad decision on top of another bad decision. Yeah. This is what a lack of investigation does. 
Your first decision's bad, so you continue to make bad decision after bad decision after bad decision until you've rained down destruction on your family, on your life. And so end up being a family gets completely destroyed of a couple hundred, and they steal all the virgins and give them to them. One sin turned into another sin, which turned into another sin, which not only brought destruction on one group, but it just brought destructions on another. And this is what will happen to us if we don't take the time to go into the Word of God and to see what it says. We don't take the time to see the things and put it in perspective of what is really going on. The third story can be found in the book of Joshua. I want to start in Joshua 1, verse 2. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people into the land that I'm giving them to the people of Israel, into the land that I'm giving them to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon I have given to you just as I promised Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, by your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That's a promise I want. No man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Is he the seed of Abraham? Is Joshua the seed of Abraham? All right. I'll come back around, as Randy Lee likes to say. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. God's not going to forsake you. He's not chasing you down. If you are saved and baptized, you have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. He doesn't have to come after you. If you think he's coming after the lost, you got another thing coming. He's not going after them. He already did that. The Bible says that the only thing the Father is seeking is worshipers. What happens is, is the responsibility of the lost is ours. And when we begin to put things on God and say, God, that's your responsibility, what will end up happening is we'll be confused and then we will begin to be okay with people going to hell. When you deflect responsibility. He's with you. Be strong and courageous for you shall cause these people to inherit the land that I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according all to the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn to the right or to the left, that you have good success wherever you go. The Word of God gives us good success everywhere we go if you apply it. The book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will find good success. I believe in the prosperity message. Catholic Church just brought out by the number two, I think he's the number two guy behind the Pope, and pretty much said that the prosperity message is of demons and all these other things. Who's been to the Vatican? Is, is, is that not a prosperous place? Does the Pope have tailors, personal tailors? That sounds like prosperity to me. The Word of God tells us that we can be prosperous and have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Then we hit a problem. They go, they defeat Jericho, they're beating all these things, God's doing great, and they go up to a town. I like to say that's the size of my town over in Guilford, Indiana, because nobody knows where that's at. They go up against Ai, and Ai beats them. And Joshua flips out because he didn't have victory. God wants you to live in perpetual victory. It's not four steps forward, two steps back. 
two steps forward, four steps back. It's forward, 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 forward. And when he realizes this, he tears his clothes. He falls to the face with his face to the earth before the Ark of the Covenant. And they, the elders do it with them. And he begins to cry out. And God answers him. He said, well, well you know, Joshua, you know, sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose some. It's, it's just the, mark, the way, way of the beast. That's just the way it goes. No, it's not what he said. He said, stop praying. Get up. Let me show you what the problem is. How many need financial breakthrough? Let me tell you what. If you think praying is going to get you financial breakthrough, you got another thing coming. You have to get up and do something. Yes, you need to pray. That's not what I'm saying. But prayer alone, faith without works is dead. My faith is not just built on something out there. My faith is built on the facts of the word of God. Get up. Israel has sinned. And so Joshua does an investigation. And what he finds out is he begins to do it, and they go down, they come to the family of Achan. And Achan goes, I've sinned. Notice he doesn't repent. He just says, yeah, I sinned. Grace covers it. I sinned. And Joshua searched just like he said, and he found everything the way he said it would be. And they brought it all back, and Achan still unrepentant. And all of a sudden, he and his whole family are swallowed up by the earth. I refuse to let my generation, I refuse to let your generation, I refuse to let my children's generation be swallowed up by this world. You see, when this began to happen, I had what I like to call a Popeye moment. Some of you may know the journey we've been going on the last four years, but I got fed up, and I said enough is enough. I've takes and all I can takes, and I can't takes no more. And I put my foot down, and I began to say, it's more than just quoting these scriptures. It's more than just praying. This is going to become my life. And God has answered it with signs following. You have to get it down on the inside of you. It's got to become a part of you. Or again, you'll, you'll, you will have no problem with people like Achan being swallowed up. Listen, time is short. Time is short. You know, last day started when? With Peter. If you think we got another 1,000 years, if you think we got another 500 years, I'm going to tell you we're in the last hour. We may be in the last minute of the last hour. It's no time to play games. It's no time to sit around. It's no time. you got to get this word of God into your heart, begin to activate it, begin to walk it out, begin to do what it says, and let it become a part of you. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? Can anybody here say that they've never broken God's law? Deuteronomy 28, 15 says, But if you do not obey the voice of God, be careful to do all He has commanded you, His statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. You see, Malachi talks about in the last day there's going to be a separation. There will be a separation between the righteous and the wicked. Look, there's no wicked in heaven he's talking about here on the earth. If you think that you can just go toe the middle of the line and it'll be okay, you're going to end up on the side of the wicked. Here, let's read it. Malachi. Malachi 3, 16. 
Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves them. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. A separation. You have to choose, like Joshua said, whom this day you will serve. Remember, we've heard many times from up here, you have to take God's side against yourself. I mean, we, we, we think that God... Uh, I'm just going to... Job... Job says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then later on he says, though the Lord slay me, I will trust him. Do you know that from, I think it's 32 to 41, all those chapters are rebuking him for these statements? Anybody? Then Job says, forgive me for I've spoken that which I don't understand. He didn't understand covenant. He didn't understand. He's sitting there sacrificing for his kids. It doesn't work. They're of age. He doesn't understand covenant. You are a blood-bought believer who has the covenant signed in the blood of Jesus. You can have what it says you can have, but doubt will shut the door on you quicker than anything. What you fear will become your reality. If you fear you'll never have enough money, then let me tell you what, you're never going to have enough money. If you fear you're going to be sick and be in pain the rest of your life, then you're going to be sick and be in pain in the rest of your life. This is why you have to take the Word of God against yourself. Let me go back to Deuteronomy 28. You know, we hear a lot about, well, in the last days there'll be trials and tribulations. That's all true. I mean, if you want to focus on the negative, go for it. You want to focus on that which is bad, go for it. But the Bible also says that there will be a great harvest. And Deuteronomy 28 says, If you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God and careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. A separation. And all the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. What did Jesus say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all the blessings will overtake you. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of the ground, the fruit of the cattle, the increase of your herds, the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your baskets in your kneading bowl. Blessed when you come in. Blessed when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated. They shall come in one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord is giving you. I, that's a lot of blessings on prosperity. I heard a person tell me one time, well, you know, the Bible says that there will always be poor. Yeah, there will always be poor. But the Bible tells you that you are to pick them up out of their poverty and help them. If you're not blessed, how do you expect to do that? The Lord will establish you as his people, holy to himself, as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways... All the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will be afraid of you. 
And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity. In the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground within the land the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. And the Lord will open the good treasury, the heavens, to give you rain to your land in the season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Do you know lending in the Bible is without taxation, is without usury? In other words, when you would help a person out of poverty, you would give them and never expect it in return. You didn't, you didn't give interest on top of it. They had, this is why it says, look, if we're coming up on the, on the year of release, don't be hard on them because they did try to pay you back. I like this one. The Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. If you're walking around in doubt, discouragement, depression, you're not the head. You have to change your thinking. Be renewed in your mind and begin to declare and get this in your spirit. Let it become who you are. I'm the head and not the tail. Find peace. Oh, you shall go up and not down. See, you thought I was saying forward, forward, forward. There it is. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, be careful to do them. Do not turn to the side. For the words I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods and serve them. It works. It works. But you have to take God's side against yours. And understand that no matter what you're going through, all your answers are here. And you have perfect theology living on the inside of you to reveal truth. But we just push that down. Oh, but you don't know what I'm going through. Who cares? Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your spirit. God, I pray that you release your spirit right now, that they would begin to get this on the inside of them. That they would see the truth of the word of God, that it would become a part of them. That you want to take them up and up and up. That you have nothing but good things for them. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Tell me what your problem is again, that it can't be fixed. Hallelujah. God, touch your people. Praise God. Amen. I like to see people burning, don't you? Hallelujah. Tell me what your problem is, that it can't be fixed. Amen. Let's all stand together.